we wanted it to be this way, but not this way. Mm-hmm. We wanted it more of us having control and it being more, I guess we we're naive, maybe, I guess, mm-hmm. if you can say, and we thought it would be more tranquil, more like how we got along, how we thought and envisioned it'd be, where we can freely grow this plant if you wanted to. If someone needed to go and buy it at a hot, at a dispensary, well, great, they mm-hmm. could. They're still going to get a good quality from someone that grew it with passion. Now it's kind of, it's a 50 50. A lot of these, yeah. you know, we, a lot, a lot of income. You know, like you say, I think a lot of people that supported legalization and supported the the changing of the rules. I think California was an interesting spot because a lot of people under 215, when they saw Prop 64 come up, were like, no, holy shit, no, don't do this. We, we've got it good, but leave us how good we've got it. And I think it's becoming ever more evident that, yeah, most of the culture, yeah. when you look at the original Humboldt families of farmers, there was like 200 and something. There's now a handful yeah, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it, it, it's they're going to get driven out of that. And then what's going to happen is a giant corporation will set up a grow and then they'll basically sell it like fine wine. That's that's what they're looking at in vineyard. And uh, that's they want to build that off the esteem of the people that they've steamrolled, the lives that they've ruined, and they're not going to compensate them financially. And I can understand that I wouldn't begrudge anybody that did take a paycheck. I can understand that. But in some way, you have to understand that you're going to, that is lessening the fight and putting everyone else further behind. Um, I think we have to have, as I said, that it's like global freedom movement for cannabis. We have to argue that the same plant I grow here is the same that you grow there, is the same that they grow. It's just different genetics and whatever else. It's not magically different. If it's not poison in my country, it's not poison in yours. If it's medicine in that country, it should be medicine in that medicine one. It, it, should, it shouldn't be separate like this. It's not how it works for a medicine even if it's not approved, like uh, Vicodin or whatever, if it's not approved outside of the U.S. in many countries, all of those countries still recognize it as a medicine. Yeah, they, exactly. they don't that's go, they don't, that. and, and yeah, that's all we need I, for I, cannabis. I did an interview last year with Uncle Kush right when I walked in the smack, and, and he goes, and I just, that's the first thing I said that I talked about is I think it's ridiculous. I can, I can have Vicodin. I can have any kind of crazy ass drug that actually does harm to my body. You know, I don't take, I try not to take prescription drugs. So I don't know all the names. Uh, I said, and travel anywhere in the world with it. Pretty much any of it's not illegal mm-hmm. there. As long as I have a script from a doctor, they're okay with it. Cause it's yeah. a pharmaceutical, a recognized a pharmaceutical yeah. drug, which means pharmaceutical companies pay big money because they have also all these other big companies and corporations are tied into it. So it's all about the money. And so, yeah, I'm allowed to do it, but yet, cause they still haven't taken a hundred percent control of this plant yet. That's why I still yeah. can't travel with it. So it's like, okay, well, if it's, I'd rather have the the latter. That I'd rather not be able to travel with it and not have the government take control of it like mm-hmm. like they do with the pharmaceuticals and have it be able to work. And I want it to be naturally that I can travel with this, not without these pharmaceuticals and big companies taking it and stepping it down and de- taking the quality yeah. down where I don't want to travel with. I'd rather travel with my stuff. I want to travel with my medication, you know, exactly. not the stuff that you you made for me in a lab, you know, created in a lab, a strain that you created in a lab. Yeah, I mean that's my my biggest fear. But that's and, my, and, the only way we might be able to be able to get that freedom is because of that, and that's why I think we can travel with pills all over the world. Is because yeah, because mm-hmm. the money's there and it's been paid into these governments and stuff, and it makes money all over the world to them. Yeah, I mean they'd argue obviously like standard medications and whatever else, but then I would counter with, well, uh, have you been to India or China? Have you seen how many uh, artificial uh, oh. or copyright? Uh, so what am I trying to say? Counterfeit was the word I was looking for there. Um, medication, prescription medications that are made for a tenth of the price. And then when again you look at like the upselling costs of prescription medications in in the U.S. marketplace or so New Zealand, you know, arguably the two countries that allow advertisements on TV pay some of the largest bills towards drugs. Go figure. It's the same thing we're seeing with with cannabis in these legalization areas that the prices end up increasing because what is California wanted? What was it? I'm trying. To, I think these numbers are pulled out my ass. I think it was fourteen percent and like thirty seven percent. It was like the way that the taxes ended up. So there was like a state tax, then there was like a local tax, then there was a specific cannabis tax of like six point whatever. I'm messing yeah. up those numbers, but by the time you add that onto the product plus plus then 
all the licensing and whatever, they've got to put that up, plus the rent for the built-in. By the time you actually get your bit of weed that costs nothing down here to produce, you're paying here. You're, you're, supplement, yeah. you're supplementing their inability to build an industry to provide you a product that you can do much better and cheaper at home. And until they can compete with us, they shouldn't be allowed to criminalize us out of existence. And that's what it feels like they're doing. The only reason to continue prohibition is, like you say, they haven't got good enough yet. When they get good enough to it, that they can be cheaper and mass produce it, which is what they're trying to do in the UK now. So one of some of our prescription meds, uh, on the sorry, the, the prescription medication for the, the prescription cannabis, some of the products are like five pound a gram. So people are then going, oh, well, I pay 10 pound a gram on the market, therefore it's half the price. So it's starting to entice some people. If they can get those margins down to one, two pound, it's going to be incredibly difficult for people to justify spending a tenner where they could be spending two. Pounds, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and I think that's where they're trying to go in saturation in numbers. But then, like we said, the only way to get that volume is shit product. So it's never going to represent the legacy. I mean, I, I know of companies in the UK that their open uh, business model as cannabis clinics isn't to protect legacy consumers, but is to attract cannabis naive patients because they don't know about the products or the services. So they'll go, doctor, you're amazing. And the doctor's like, oh yes, thank you. Thank you. Here, take this random old shitty ass weed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's not saying it's all crap, but as a, as a general assumption, uh, right. over assertion, you know? Exactly. Mm. No, uh, it, it, it's sad how how it's been. Like you know, they got the micro uh, micro micro, li micro license in Michigan and stuff, and now they're even pushing them guys out because a lot of the micro people were the ones that were growing it for patients, truly growing for patients. And now they get pushed, out. but now they got the micro. But they the micro license people are getting raided on that and stuff because because all of a sudden they start doing good or they 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 make it start people eyes start getting on them because they're getting a lot of patients or whatever, and then boom they get raided because somebody else paying a lot of money for their other big license there with their big dispensary upset because they're not making yeah. enough money. It, 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 it's it's crazy how it, it's gotten though, and as I yeah. said, but. 20 years ago when I first, you know, over 20 years ago when I first came over to Amsterdam, this is kind of where we wanted it, but not this way. We just wanted to be able to freely light up a joint, smoke a dab, you know, do whatever we want to without persecution, you know, think, consider yeah. it a medication or consider recreation, no taxes, no, 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 no big pharmaceutical, big corporations and stuff getting involved with it, you know, yeah. and, and changing it and tweaking it and, you know, it, but it's sad. I, I mean, I'm hoping that we can change it. You know, it's it's the people, these kids now. I mean, mm -hmm. we did what we could. Now it's our uh, the younger generation now that are coming up to make sure that it doesn't change. That they listen to yeah. the people that have been that, that are here now that are that, that changed it. Yeah. And I don't know. It's yeah. No, hundred percent. It's it's what's one of the main reasons I do this project is to try and act as a bridge. Because I mean, I've been lucky enough to be in the space. I suppose twenty years privately, you know, ten years very publicly, um, <laughs> and I've always been an avid supporter of cannabis since a young teenager. It, it gave me a sense of purpose and connection, and it's given me a way to see the world and to see the world in different ways, and to meet unique and wonderful people, and to really have my eyes open to what is you know the human experience. And I kind of feel obligated, but equally blessed to to want to do that. I'm grabbing the torch from yourself and Jack and people like Vivian uh, McPeak and that kind of generation, Eddie Lepp, and, and passing it through my generation who it bypassed a lot of us. They ran off and helped the politicians and the cops and the same people, and they wrote yeah. the bills and they betrayed the culture. And I want to just help pass that knowledge to the young ones that you're like, you say, are going to come up and not be diverted into that corporate shit show where they go, oh, sweet, I'm going to go work for this giant conglomerate that actually last year killed a thousand people through pills that it made. Do, do you know what I mean? Or like they get, they get railroaded by that corporate sidetrack instead of going through the legacy culture. And I mean, you've said it a couple of times there. I think what the vision was for most of the, the older generation of people was basically the end of criminalization. It wasn't legalization. It was, we're going to do what we do now, but you're not going to harm me for it. And then if I choose to do the next thing, you won't harm me for it. And it meant you're just going, oh, this yeah, is what it feels but, like. Yeah, just stretching no, no, it off like, and going like, like, like how, uh, how do uh, I want to uh, live? Like, yeah, you got it. Like, you're like this, your hands, you know, you're going to stretch a little bit, then all of a sudden you're, you're class. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 100%. You're not, you you don't have that freedom. It's it's a free uh, illusion of freedom that mm -hmm. they're showing people 
just to make extra money in this market and our government. And they're demonizing and, us for it. They're then saying you're either a medical patient and oh, good, good for you and you're allowed special dis- dispensation or you're, you know, part of the corporate cabal buying from the dispensary yeah, really supporting bad. that. Yeah, but everyone else, you're drug dealers, you're criminals, yeah. you're the reason that our quarterly shares are not as high as they should be. Our profits should be 4% higher than this. And what we want to do is actually now spend part of our marketing budget. I'm not grassing on any company or situation by saying this anecdote, but um, use part of our marketing budget to rally against home growers in a given region knowing that if we can restrict home growing, they have to buy from us because we know they want cannabis now. Like that kind of backhanded things, it just happens everywhere every day. 